Call to order this meeting of the Council Rock School Board. Um, we'll start with um, a Pledge of Allegiance led by Olivia C. Olivia, where are you? Let's say. Okay. Churchville Elementary School Special Chorus sings the National Anthem.
Nice job. Very nice. Great job, Churchville. Thank you so very much. Keep up the great work. Thank you. All right, moving along. Could I have a roll call vote, please? Mark Violet. Here. Ed Tate. Here. Mike Thorward. Present. Denise Brooks. Here. Mary Here. Uh, Mr. Hidalgo is away on business. Kristen uh, Marcel. Here. Ed Salomon. Here. Andy Glock. Here. Andy is dialing in by a phone. He uh, didn't want to give us the flu, so he's going to stay home. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, student Advisory Board. Uh, Ms. Carusa, come on up. <laughs> quite as exciting for, to hear me as it was to hear them. They were wonderful. Oh, we're happy to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the School Board of Directors, Dr. Frazier and Central Office Administrators. My name is Christine Caruso, and I'm one of the two new high school technology integration specialists. It's a pleasure to come before you this evening and introduce Council Rock High School South Student Advisory Board. These fine students will update you on recent activities at South, as well as speak to uh, events that are coming up. To start us off tonight, we have, representing the Sloan School, Samantha Dawson. Hi. Uh, my name is Sam, currently an 11th grader at Sloan School. I'm excited to share with you a little bit about some of the things we are doing this coming semester and what we have done in the past. Some of my favorite Favorites from the first semester are trips with Achieve, various field trips, and building strong relationships with my peers and teachers. As we enter the second semester, here are some of the main courses that we are offering. In meteorology, we are learning about greenhouse effect, the greenhouse effect and global warming. In sociology, we are examining the effects of social structure and culture of human behaviors. In psychology, we are studying the human mind and the, its effects on our behaviors. We continue to work hard on our year-long courses as well. In biology, we are studying DNA and finishing our unit on heredity and genetics. In environmental science, we are learning about human population analysis, environmental toxins. In world history, we are doing surveying of world cultures in Latin America. And in American Civ, we are learning about segregation and the civil rights movement. For geometry, we are looking at proofs of congruent triangles. In Algebra 2, we are studying radicals and complex number systems. In Algebra 1, we are working on linear functions to the real world and rates of change. And for English classes, grades 10 through 12, we are doing vocab work and short stories. Group Dynamics is also a class we attend every day to process through problems and other issues that arise in our lives. We also are learning about the seven habits of highly effective teens. We also will be having a series of presentations from a woman's place which will focus on healthy teen relationships. The current class of 2021 is starting their transition class, which means we meet weekly to discuss and learn about post high school living. We learn about the process of enrolling into the community college or other post secondary schooling. A representative from State Farm is scheduled to pre present to our class discussing insurance and personal coverage. In health class, we are learning about the effects of recreational drug use on the human body. Some of the other highlights from the year, from the year were a few of the community service activities we participated in, such as the holiday food drive for the Wrightstown Food Cupboard and the MLK Day of service items to children homes and communities. We continue to have a great relationship with the ACHIEVE program, and each Wednesday, several students go on the CBI with ACHIEVE to local restaurants and serve as a mentor for the ACHIEVE students. Also, two Fridays a month, we join them in their trip to the Newtown Athletic Club. We hope to participate in, in future activities such as community college visits and the class field trip, and this is just a snapshot of where we are now and what is coming up for our immediate future. Thank you.
Good evening. I'm Mallory Marsan, the ninth grade representative, and on January 5th, a presentation was given to all grades to show the struggles that teens have with sleeping. Things such as technology, caffeine, and homework were examples of things that prevent students from getting enough sleep. We were given advice on how to fall asleep early with the time management and healthier eating patterns. On March 18th, we will be having our 18th talent show. Students will try out next month and tickets will be sold from March 9th to the 13th. Recently, our counselors were congratulated with a lunch during our school's counseling week. Whether helping students with social and emotional issues, navigating the college admissions process, planning for course elections, or organizing meetings and conferences, our counseling department gets it done and does it well. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Katie Burke, and I'm the 10th grade representative for South Student Advisory Board. Tonight, I'll be speaking about upcoming musical events. After much anticipation, South's choir director, Ms. Mr. Axler, finally revealed the choir's travel destination for the spring of 2021, Italy. The choirs will perform at various sites, including St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican City. They will visit historic locations, including Pompeii in the Roman Colosseum, and they will even hike to the top of Mount Vesuvius, a volcano near Italy's west coast. On Saturday, February 29th, South's indoor color guard team is hosting their annual competition in the gym, Spin Out at the Rock. You'll see more than 60 visiting teams using flags, rifles, and sabers to amaze the judges with their performance. After practicing for many months, South's color guard is eager to astound the audience with their combination of dance, artistry, and music. Finally, we're thrilled to announce the opening of the Tony Award-winning Best Musical, Thoroughly Modern Millie, on stage March 5th through March 7th. The show is set in New York City during the 1920s and centers around Millie, a strong, independent woman trying to get ahead in life. The show features a wonderful singing, wonderful singing, a full student orchestra, dancing, a hilarious cast, and above all, a message of women's empowerment. The directors have updated the script and made meaningful changes which will make our production an even more modern Millie. Tickets can be purchased by emailing Golden Wings Theatre Company at gmail.com. Thank you and have a great night. Good evening. My name is Andrew Rosenfeld and I'm the 11th grade representative for Council Rock South Student Advisory Board. Tonight, I will be telling you about the upcoming AHA Carnival Fun Night, the Spring Keystone Exams, and Mini-Thon. This Friday, from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., Athletes Helping Athletes will be holding their Carnival Fun Night at Counts Rock South. At this event, there will be tons of volunteers and up to 65 AHA kids attending. The group will be participating in dancing, face painting, pie in the face, box golf, and many other events. The Athletes Helping Athletes Club would like to thank all of the various pizza places who provided generous donations of pizzas. In addition, this event will mark the first time our school will have a sensory room available for AHA athletes who may have difficulty with the loud noises or busy atmosphere that the Carnival Fun Night fosters. Next Friday, CR South's Minithon Club will be holding their main event of the year. For four hours, participants will get to dance with their friends, listen to up to five speakers, and watch as money is raised for the cause. As of now, 136 students have signed up to attend. In spring, CR South students will be performing the annual Keystone exams. On May 13th and 14th, the Algebra and Literature Keystones will take place, while on the 18th and the 19th, the Biology ones will. If students need to take both Algebra and Literature, then they will take the Algebra on the 13th and the 14th and make up Literature on the 20th and the 21st. For students not taking the exams, there will be a late arrival. Thank you for your time and I hope you all have a great night. Good evening everyone, my name is Nick Milvoy and I'm the Senior Representative for the Council Rock South SAB. Before we begin tonight, I just wanted to remind everyone that Disney is in 55 days while I have to sing to everyone in 64 days. <laughs> tonight, I'll touch base on the senior Disney trip, the signing breakfast, and our recent vaping presentation with our recent guest, Dave Blaco. 
Through Tuesday, April 14th and Saturday the 18th, the senior class will be down at Disney, going to Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, Hollywood and Universal Studios, and Epcot within the five, di five days down at Disney. Seniors may also make Fast Pass and restaurant reservations now on the Class of 2020 Senior Trip page on Canvas. On the morning of February 7th, during first period, 15 of South's most blue-collar athletes signed to play at the next level of their respective sport, D1 and D2. Another year of South athletes taking their talent to the next level. On a final note, on February 6th, our guest speaker, Dave Blaco, a prevention specialist, came to South to present the dangers of topics such as smoking, vaping, nicotine, and addiction, discussing the struggle and problems that follow with these topics, especially when it comes to quitting. He presented to our juniors and seniors during second period and our sophomores and freshmen during third period. Before we conclude tonight, I just wanted to say thank you for your time again tonight and how we're down to our last meeting already. Time flies, let me tell you. Thank you and have an awesome night. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Great stuff happening at South and great stuff happening at Sloan. Thank you all so much. You did a great job. Thank you. Enjoy Thank your you. evening. With. With that, Superintendent's report, Dr. Frazier. Okay, thank you, Dr. Thorwart. Good evening to the board and good evening to our community. Uh, from a capital standpoint, I'm going to start with a general update that all is going well, thanks to Mr. Taylor and Mr. Taylor's team. Uh, Rolling Hills is coming along very nicely. Uh, if you drive by there, I'm sure you're amazed at what you see and wait until you get inside. What a change that's going to be for the students and teachers when they return this fall. Uh, we're also poised to end the lease with uh, LSAC, the Law School Admissions Council, uh, as of this June 30th. Uh, the three programs that are currently housed there, Sloan, which we just heard about, Achieve, and Twilight, uh, will all move into the former Richboro Middle School this fall. And then the CR Star Center, which is now approved and uh, full go, will be ready for these programs for the 2021-22 school year. Uh, and then next, of course, we have Hillcrest and Richboro will be ready to be renovated uh, the following two years during the same time that Sewell Finestone is also being renovated. So all of that will culminate in the summer of 2023, the long range capital plan that we developed a couple years ago. We will finally know and our students and teachers will finally be thrilled that every single classroom in the Council Rock School District come the summer of 2023 will be air conditioned. Uh, if you have ever tried to teach or learn at the beginning of the year or the end of the year, right, Ms. McKee? Yeah. <laughs> in a room that's not air conditioned, and I've done both, it is not fun and certainly not conducive to, uh, to teaching or learning as well. Uh, switching gears to uh, a couple of our district programs that we have in the district. Uh, it was mentioned at last uh, month's board meeting that we are in a position where we need to relocate two of our district special education programs. The first of these is our intensive learning support program, IOS program, which is currently a Holland Elementary and will transition to Churchville Elementary this fall. And the second program of which is our life skills support program, LSS program, which currently has uh, one classroom at Hillcrest and one classroom at Newtown Elementary. And both of those classrooms uh, will be relocated and transitioned to Richboro Elementary in the fall. Uh, I do want to assure everyone that we um, administratively and, uh, and by extension took great pains to explore any and all potentially viable options and in the final analysis, uh, there really was only one viable alternative for each of those programs, uh, as I had just referenced, in the form of Churchville Elementary and in the form of Richboro Elementary. Uh, so now, as we did last spring, uh, summer and fall for students who were redistricted, we are turning our attention to putting everything we have into ensuring the smoothest transition possible for these students, their families, and the faculty and staff who will also be making this transition. Uh, and I'll close with a uh, reminder that so far, uh, we have used only one snow day. Um, this has been a great winter. I think we would agree to that, knock on wood. Uh, so as of today, subject to change, but as of today, the final 
day of the school year is set for Tuesday, June 16th, and that gives me a chance to also remind you that for the second year now, we have locked in our graduation ceremonies. So regardless of the rest of the winter, both uh, North and South High School graduation ceremonies will be held on Monday, June 15th. And that ends my report this evening. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Frazier. Um, moving along, solicitor's report, Mr. Cox. Dr. Thorwart, I circulated a relatively uh, lengthy report to the board earlier in the week. And beyond that, I'll just report the executive session that we held prior to tonight's meeting on potential contract litigation and my understanding that the board will hold an executive session following the meeting on personnel. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Um, moving on, the next thing on the agenda is public comment. Um, I've got a sign-in sheet here. We'll start in a minute. Um, just because I see some new faces out here, public comment is a chance for the public to give their comments to the board. Please, uh, when you come up to the podium, state your name, where you're from. You've got uh, three minutes. I'll raise my hand or try and get your attention when you've got about 15 seconds left. Um, to give everybody a chance, I will cut you off at three minutes. So um, we'll start with the sign-in sheet. If someone else wants to speak after we get through the sign-in sheet, uh, you can line up and, and, and we'll see you as well. The first one on my list is Samantha Dawson, but I think she just signed in as part of the Student Advisory Board, so we'll cross her out. Next on my list is Tim Flanagan. Please state your name and where you're from. Or your names, I guess there's two of you. That one's small. Um, good evening. My name is Declan Small. I'm a fifth grader at Hillcrest. I'm here today to ask you to keep the life skills class at Hillcrest. My interactions with Joe Lee, Joey, and the rest of the life skills class have taught me how to be a better person and friend. I think it would be unfair to the life skills class to pull them away from their friends who know and care about them. Communication is sometimes difficult for the kids in the life skills class. We, the fifth grade class at Hillcrest, have spent the last five years learning how to communicate with Joey and Jolie. This did not happen overnight. When Jolie and Joey are having a bad day or getting frustrated, we do not rush them, but instead take the time to help them. This is the first year that there are not two life skills classrooms. Also, this year, many of our other friends were registered to Holland. With fewer kids in school, how is it that we do not have enough space for the life school classes? Please reconsider the decision to move the life school classes out of Hillcrest. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, I'm Kyla Briscoe. Good afternoon. I'm Kyla Briscoe, and I'm here to speak on my little brother's behalf because he's in a will because he's in Williamsburg for a soccer tournament, but he's joining us on FaceTime. Before I say his speech, I would like to say something of my own. I've been at Hillcrest since I was in kindergarten, and I'm currently a seventh grader at Holland Middle School. When I attended Hillcrest, I was very close with the life skills kids, and I continue to be friends with them in middle school. Being in middle school, I've noticed that kids that have come from schools where they did not have the exposure as I did to life skills kids don't know how to treat them. They seem uncomfortable with them. If you send these kids from Hillcrest to Richborough, they will lose their last year of being accepted by everyone. It's unnecessary to have them make that change two years in a row. I've also witnessed what good friends my brother and every kid at Hillcrest is to these kids, and it's amazing. So please keep our friends at Hillcrest for not only the benefit for them, but for my brother and all the other students who care for them so much at Hillcrest. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have my little brother's speech, too. Hi, my name is Liam Briscoe and I live in Holland, PA. The life skills kids are very close to me and a lot of other kids at Hillcrest. If you were to move them, it would not only make the life skills kids and their families upset, but it would make all, all of their friends upset too. All the kids at Hillcrest are very good with the kids at, and know how to treat them. The kids at Richboro may not know how to treat them like we know how. I love to play with them at recess and walk with them down the hall and play games with them. Me and two of my friends love to go to Joel Lee's house and swim with her. 
I will miss Jolie, Joey, and everyone else. Please do not move our friends. Thank you. Any other public comment? Hi, my name is Tim Flanagan, and I live in uh, Newtown, Pennsylvania. My name is Tim Flanagan, and our son John attends Newtown Elementary. John splits his day between life skills with Ms. Barch and third grade with Ms. Frawley. Both are amazing teachers. John attended kindergarten in Hellcrist and has attended first through third grade at Newtown Elementary. In November, we learned of the plans to move life skills to Richborough Elementary. That would be three different schools in four years for a nine-year-old with speech delays and learning challenges. When John was moved from Hillcrest to Newtown Elementary, we were told there simply wasn't enough room, though he would never be moved again. Three years later, we're being told the same thing. Our daughter is currently in kindergarten at Goodnow, and she doesn't uh, take any special education courses. I doubt we'll ever be told that there's not enough room for her. This plan does not take into account the negative impact to John both educationally and emotionally. For children with delays, familiarity, consistency, and a sense of community are all vital for sustained development. My frustration and concern is that decisions are being made with these factors, not with these factors in mind, but what I feel are administrative conveniences. Since learning about this plan, I've been told that, quote, there were literally no other options available, and there simply wasn't time for collaboration with the parents. I don't believe that. The issues around available space at Hillcrest date back to 2018. This is not a new problem. I doubt that my words will have much of an effect on the decision to uproot John and his classmates yet again without regard for the communities that they become a part of. I would instead like to take my remaining time to ask the following questions and hope that this board would provide thoughtful responses, and I'll leave a copy. During the redistricting process, parents were involved and served in communities. There was open dialogue and collaboration. Why weren't the parents of special education afford the same opportunity? Why is this an issue of available space? Why is when an issue of available space rises, the solution is to move the very children least equipped to handle this change? And my final one is: Do you consider Council Rock redistricting plan a success as it relates to the children of special needs? Thank you for your time. Next. Hi, my name is Ellen Rawitz. I'm a parent at Hillcrest. I'm extremely disappointed in, in the way the current situation with life skills has have been handled. It seems that there have been multiple short-sighted decisions. Why is there a program at Newtown when the middle school and high school programs are only in the South? That doesn't seem fair to those children. I've sent emails to the board with no response, with the exception of just one acknowledging receipt of the message, and that was extremely disappointing to me. The situation was created by the district combining the life skills classes into one K-6 to class. That would never happen with, to children without special needs. How could that be in the best interest of those children? It's been suggested to me that a parent created the situation by contacting the state to advocate for his or her child. That was insulting to me that the district didn't take responsibility for creating this situation. The district has a responsibility to know and follow those PDE regulations. I don't know if those regulations were not known to the district or they were disregarded. Either way is, is embarrassing and unacceptable. During redistricting, it was said multiple times, and there are multiple documents on the website saying that the special services programs would not be impacted. The district has a responsibility to ensure that arrangements were made during that process to ensure that that promise could be kept. The email sent to Hillcrest and Newtown families yesterday seemed to cavalierly suggest that treating this move in the same way as redistricting was acceptable. These children are not typical children. I love the kids, but they are not typical children. To suggest that the same process would be appropriate is not correct. These, children, these are children for whom routine and structure is more important than for your average child. To treat this transition in the same way as the redistricting transition is irresponsible. There are two fifth, grade, two fifth grade students at Hillcrest who have been completely loved and embraced by the rest of the fifth grade class. You've heard from two of the children. There were two other fifth graders here tonight, including my son. They invite them to birthday parties. They play with them. They look out for them. They argue over who gets to go get them from their other class and who gets to help them. It is incredibly heartwarming. I'm sure that the children and community at Richboro 
will do the same for them, but they will not be able to create the relationships that have been created in the five years that these kids have been at Hillcrest. To disrupt these relationships for a year at Richborough, then to have them move again to middle school will undoubtedly be challenging for them and it's not fair. I implore you to consider a creative use of space at Hillcrest for next year. Perhaps a large classroom can be divided with a soundproof divider. Perhaps the room in the entryway in the alcove in the, outside the office can be used for storage to open up a room in the more secure part of the school. We're slated for renovation the year after next. The addition of a classroom or two to those renovations plans, and I know that they're not in that plan, would allow for less disruption of the life skills program. And I'll close with a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. The true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. Is this really how Council Rock wants to be measured? Hello, my name is uh, Chris Fagan. My son Max is a uh, fourth grader at Hillcrest. Um, we've kind of been through this scenario. Uh, you've heard the parents, you've heard the kids. Um, one of the most disheartening things about this is probably the lack of communication to these folks. Um, a year and a half ago, we knew that there was a problem in Hillcrest. Um, they handled that extremely well back then. Chuck handled that. Um, if we look at the classroom size now, there's a second grade class at Hillcrest with four classrooms, and I believe a fourth grade or th fourth grade or third with four. So this overcrowdingness is not new. This is something that was known two years ago, easily if you do the numbers. I understand the numbers. I understand your challenge of trying to fit kids in classrooms, but um, the lack of communication and not engaging in us will pick a parent liaison to come, you know, be part of this process. Um, does Richboro, you know, you heard how the kids love being around them. The classroom, is it conducive? You know, we're putting all this money into the district. Why don't we make a room at a school somewhere that is completely conducive to growing the, uh, the life skills program? There's, uh, I think, 16 families, maybe 17. Uh, what's going on in the numbers in the history of this country, it's going to grow. It's not shrinking. So let's plan for it. To me, the lack of communication and the planning, and we are the last ones to be part of this process. All the other parents are brought in for the, for the regular ed. Seventh through 11th grade kids are grandfathered. Uh, the lack of communication is just as heartening to me. Um, you've, I don't need to repeat what everybody else has said, but that's the one thing that we, we really want to be a part of, the communication as this goes forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jennifer Myers. I'm from Newtown. My son uh, attends Newtown Elementary. I didn't prepare anything, but I felt like I had to speak for Newtown because everybody else was here for Hillcrest. Um, so my son has been there for five years. Um, so he's in fourth grade, and he has come to love and People there love him everywhere we go. People know him. Um, he's got great friends there in his typical class. And now you're asking him two years before moving to middle school to then be moved to a different school where nobody knows him. No, some, one of the kids said about communication. These kids have a hard time communicating, but yet over the five years, kids have learned how to communicate with them and how to understand them and work with them and when he's in his typical class, which is where he should be most of the time, um, they can work with him. They, ha they understand him and they can buddy up with him and, and help him through his lessons. And that is the biggest thing. Now you move him to somewhere else where nobody knows him, they don't understand him, and now he's regressing. Two years before moving, in, in a critical time, he's 11 years old, critical time, and now there's a chance that he's gonna regress. To me, that's, I can't accept that. I can't put my child through that, um, given that he has special needs. And, uh, you know, it's not only for him, but I, and I think one of the other kids said, to the typical kids, there's so much benefit. And I hear this from parents and from kids. That we see them at the pool, we see them around the neighborhood, how much they love having these kids and how much they've learned about diversity and about inclusion and about Differences, everybody has differences, right? Um, and, and just how much better of a person they are. His 
my son's uh, good friend, typical peer, lives a couple doors down. She is, she's an advocate. She's, she's all about helping kids with special needs, with Down syndrome, and it's all because of, of Andrew and Gavin. And, you know, you, you, you now have ripped that out of the North, right? Because now there's no program in the North, which I don't understand, um, because my understanding was opening a new town, my son would stay in the North. And yet now I'm hearing, oh no, the plan was always for him to go to the South. Well, I don't understand that. Why does my son have to be shipped onto the other side of the district when I live in Newtown? Do we not have the resources or the um, creativity to come up with a more flexible program for our kids that you can have North and South um, and that they can stay where they are? Why do we all have to be shoved, grouped together, segregated, and treat it like this. To me, this is not fair, and to what everybody, all the other people said, the lack of communication, the lack of collaboration is, is unacceptable. Thank you. Good evening. My name's Dan Lynch, and I'm a resident of North Hatham Township. <clears throat> Apologize if I seem a little nervous. Generally don't speak in the public. I have a child, a son, that's in the ILS program in Holland. Last year, Council Rock redistricted students. The redistricting took over a year. There was parent input. There were committees. There was even board approval. At this time, there's a plan in place for the district to move special services, special education programs. Why are the children with special needs and learning disabilities not afforded the same rights and given the same due process? There's no parent input, there's no committees, and there's no board action. Council, Rock, Council Rock's strategic plan includes student mental health and well-being. This can be found on the district's website, and Dr. Fraser has even quoted in news articles enthusiastic support of this plan, mostly because studies prove that a better, better the mental health of the student, the more successful they will be. Even local representatives understand the importance of mental health and the well-being of the students. They have even put a bill forward called Phillips Law, named after Philip Sproul, an 11-year-old special education student who took his own life after being bullied. But, stu but studies also prove that students with special needs and learning disability suffer from mental health issues twice as often as mainstream students. These students often tend to be targeted and statistics prove they are more likely to be bullied. When questioned, these victims report that their low self-esteem and result, results of, of being bullied and the feeling of not belonging. So why do we choose to move the most vulnerable of the children? Those that have the most difficulty learning, suffer from poor mental health, and problems maintaining relationships. It was in 1954, Brown versus the Board of Education passed and dictated that all children of color will be awarded free and non-segregated appropriate education. At the time, people, were cons people of color were considered second-class citizens. But it wasn't until 1975, on the heels of the Civil Rights Movement, that the Individuals with Disabilities Act was passed. That was more than 20 years after Brown's decision. It took nearly 20 years because children with disabilities were treated as less than second class. When asked, Dr. Frazier replied, when asked why these programs were being moved, Dr. Frazier's answer was, there isn't enough room. No wonder these kids feel like they don't belong. So at this point, I'm asking the Board of Directors to please step in and at least review this decision. I will make myself available, and if I can be any help to the Board, please reach out. Any other? Yes. Good evening. So um, please I didn't know that. state your name. And oh, Damian Madison. I'm the father of Aiden Madison. We're... Um, a parent at Holland Elementary School. Thank That's you. one of the other schools. I didn't know Hillcrest and Newtown was getting moved either. So this seems to be a, a breakaway issue that can't be tackled. And when I was growing up, I'm the youngest of five siblings, and I'm the last one 
who went through my district and we got redistricted from my home school to Charles Bain Middle School and I was uh, discriminated just because I was from a different town. I didn't have any disabilities or anything like that. So this is a huge concern for me. And what I want, I'm a little nervous, sorry, but what I want, I would like for everyone to do is to really seriously talk about this instead of this being like a lip service thing, like think about what we're saying and please, please help our kids stay in the home schools that they deserve to be in. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? We have one more? Okay. Oh, time's right there. So, um, my name is Amy Seda. This is my husband, Derek Seda. Um, collectively, could we have six minutes? I have a statement I'd like to read. Uh, my name is Amy Seda. I live in Washington Crossing. I'm here on behalf of my daughter, Tori, a third grader at Holland Elementary, who has been part of the ILS program since kindergarten. We were here last month and addressed our concerns regarding the move of the ILS program from Holland to Churchville in the upcoming school year. What we understand is that Holland is at capacity due to a combination of poor redistricting formulas and an underestimation of the number of new families that moved into the neighborhood last year and that it was this growth that had forced you to take our 15 kids and displace them. However, as we start learning more about other special needs programs like life skills being impacted by the same space issues at other schools and future special needs programs moving like the autistic program down the road, it's hard not to wonder, is there something else influencing these moves, something else conveniently being buried under space concerns? With these imminent changes, a more important question was, was the wellness of these children considered, especially with all the recent discussions around the regulations supporting the importance of the health and wellness of all the students in the Council Rock School District? Was there any relevant consideration given to what a move like this would do to the wellness of these children in particular? All these children will respond very differently to this type of change and will require different levels of attention. For example, in addition to a slew of medical conditions, my daughter has hearing loss and wears hearing aids and needs to utilize an FM system in all of her learning environments. She requires vision support in all her classrooms. She falls often on the playground. Climbing stairs safely and independently is still a work in progress and is actually part of her IEP. She needs to be monitored while she eats. She's at risk of having seizures. And at nine, she still isn't even potty trained. Talk about open season for teasing. Can any adult, let alone this board, imagine what it must be like to manage any or all of this as a fourth grader? On top of learning how to read and perform basic math, and then pile on top of that fitting in and building normal friendships within the general population of already existing groups of friends? Because let's face it, having friends is the one thing that makes our kids feel like they're just not ILS kids. It makes them feel less isolated. Studies show that premature children like our daughter are more likely to have learning, developmental, and medical challenges and are also at greater risk of experiencing behavioral complications throughout their school age years. So I have to ask, why would you put our daughter and other children at risk for additional social and behavioral problems when health and wellness is so important to this administration? As Dr. Frazier was quoted saying in the, Buc in the Bucks County Local News, September 12, 2019, the reality is that kids today are dealing with more stress, more anxiety, more depression, and even suicidal ideation than ever before. We have to be responsive to that, and we will. The student wellness area focuses specifically on mental health, social, and emotional learning, said Frazier. We want our students to be mentally healthy. We want them to be emotionally healthy. And we also want them to be physically healthy. To a discerning person, it may, it may appear as though our children are being marginalized by the very same people who give sound bites about wanting all of our children to be mentally healthy. It begs the question, is this because these kids do not feed the typical Council Rock reputational stats when it comes to things like percentage of high school graduates that have gone on to Ivy League schools? or standardized test scores that reflect high percentages for proficiency in math and reading, just because they may not feed these stats doesn't mean these kids don't matter. 
or that they deserve to be shuffled around like chairs in a classroom. My husband attended and I watched the live streaming video last week of Representative Thomas's and Kenyatta's legislative hearing on House Bill 1622. The hearing heard statements by many scholars, educators, and the leaders of public advocacy groups who point to the importance of early stage intervention and awareness. Representative Thomas said, mental health is an issue that does not discriminate. It affects all ages, races, genders, and classes. These children, my daughter, are very notably already managing their hurdles. How can it make sense? Better said, how can three substandard classrooms at Holland justify putting this class at further risk? My daughter's progress report last week showed so much incredible growth, stating things like independent problem solver when navigating the building and classrooms, independently able to access the resources she needs to learn, appropriately engages with peers and adults throughout the day, independently gets to where she needs for all of her therapy sessions, actively participates in morning meetings with her third grade peers. I could go on and notice I'm not talking about progress in math and reading because it's not because she didn't progress, and it's not because it isn't important, but because you can move math and reading to another building. But these intangible things that I did note are harder to replace, and they become the foundation of learning for these children. The more they can be independent, typical students, the more they can focus and learn. My last point is, regression is a real thing. These kids are in school all year, thanks to the, the provision of the extended school year program. They are in school all year for a reason. They need constant, steady learning. Any disruption and their progress goes away, and they have to work much harder and longer to get it back. And we are talking about kids who are already years behind in their learning. It's not fair. It's not right. The reputation of Council Rock is important to us. If it's important to you, please do the right thing and let these kids stay and continue to learn in an environment that is proven to be reliable, controlled, and working for them. There must be other ways to make the changes you desire without disrupting existing ILS or other special needs students. All we ask is that you please consider those options. Thank you so much for your time. Anyone else? All right, seeing none, we will move on. First action on the agenda is items H and I, approval of minutes. Uh, Mr. Tate, could you do those two together, please? I will, thank you. Dr. Thorward, I move to approve the minutes of the public school board meeting on January 23rd of 2020, and I move to approve the minutes of the special meeting of the Board of School Directors on January 30 of 2020. Second. Thank you. Any discussion, mm -hmm. questions? Um, with Mr. Block on the phone, we're going to do a roll call vote for everything tonight per board policy. So. Andy Block. Andy. Yes. That was a yes. <laughs> Mark Byler. Yes. Ed Tate? Yes. Mike Thorward? Yes. Denise Brooks? Yes. Aaron McGee? Yes. Kristen Marcella? Yes. Ed Sullivan? Yes. Thank you. Um, moving on. Sorry, Mr. Uh, Tate. Uh, Education <laughs> Committee, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thorward. Sorry. Yeah. Do um, you want my motion first? Yes, please. Um, I move to approve consent agenda items B through C as contained in the attachments to this agenda. Second. Thank you, Mark. Any, uh, nothing? Uh, we're going to do roll call vote again. Okay. Mark Byler? Yes. Ed Tate? Yes. Mark Thorward? Yes. Denise Brooks? Yes. Mary Ann McKee? Yes. Kristen Marcel? Yes. Yes. Andy Block? Yes. <laughs> you heard that one loud and clear. Yeah. This is Brooks, uh, Brooks IU. Point of order. Yeah. Can I ask a question, please? Um, 
Is it required to have a roll call vote per our policy? Is that what you said? Yes. If there's a, Mr. Bile. Can we suspend that for the for this meeting if if uh, Dr. Thorpe checks over Mr. Block specifically if he has an objection and we can just move forward just for expediency? Yes, you can, but it's really up to the members present to waive that requirement. Okay. But, okay. but yes, I, you. I, I'll make a motion that we waive that requirement for this meeting as far as, as long as Dr. Thorward checks in with Mr. Block directly if he has any questions or objections. I'll second that. Mr. Block, are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. We need we need a roll call <laughs> vote. We, we <laughs> will need a roll call vote on this. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Mark. Of course. Sorry, everybody. No, it's okay, Andy. Okay, Thank you for asking. Andy, can you make it Very good. All right. Um, Sorry? <laughs> real quickly, uh, we last met as Education Committee on January 30. We discussed the possible revision of the high school start times. And that, of course, would be two years out if indeed it happened. We also discussed the district calendar for 2021 and 22. And thirdly, we discussed, and this was the most lengthy item on the agenda trauma-informed care and practices, a subject that a number of uh, those of us on the board learned about at PSBA training um, the prior Saturday. Um, it's an important concept and it is now required by state law. Um, and uh, Dr. Elliott informed me today that um, all of our K-12 teachers uh, went through trauma-informed care and practices training um, during professional development on February the 14th. And in August, our support staff will be trained on trauma-informed care and practices as required by state law. Our next meeting is February 27. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Mrs. Brooks, uh, IU report, please. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> no problem. I actually was traveling this week and was unable to attend the meeting, so I do not have a report tonight. Okay. Thank you. Um, Council Rock Education Foundation, Ms. Marcel, you're, you're taking over for Mr. O'Donovan tonight? Just for the Just for tonight, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have two updates for the board. Um, one is a reminder of the upcoming grant deadline. Um, as many of you know, uh, last year the Council Rock Education Foundation funded more than $60,000 for teachers and district-wide grants for innovative K-12 projects that are not covered in our annual school budget. Um, this year, the goal is to award more grants. The process is in the spring coming up. They're still taking um, proposals online. The deadline is March 9th, and you can go to the CREF website for more information or check out the Facebook page. My second update is um, regarding the FUGE events, which everyone has a postcard um, at their place tonight to remind them about it. Um, it's a, an excellent event. It's on Saturday, March 21st. It's called Rock the Fuge with Bonehead. Um, there will be great fruit, food, spirits, entertainment, dancing, raffle baskets, silent auction items. Um, there actually are two raffles um, that I wanted to mention. One is the Board of Directors Wine Raffle. That includes over 30 bottles of wine um, that are hand-selected. And another one is a grand prize raffle for uh, a party of five at the Fuge. So those are two um, raffles. Um, I know that a number of board members are talking about going, and so if anyone's interested, uh, please talk to Joe or to myself or to me for more information. And really, you know, please share this with people in the community. People can learn more on the Facebook page or on uh, CREducationFoundation.org. And just as a quick reminder, uh, tickets are $40 each. 
you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, MBIT report. Um, I know that Mark and I stood in, and I'm assuming, yep, please. Would you like me to take it? Okay. So, uh, Dr. Thorwart and I uh, had the pleasure of sitting in for uh, Ms. Marcel and um, Ms. McKee at the last meeting. I think it was last Monday. Yes, um, it was. Of course. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> it's always nice to visit MBIT. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we had a great student presentation on the dental program. Um, we uh, had a, and, and you know, I, I just don't want to pass over that because those kids really do an amazing job. And it's mm -hmm. always very impressive. Um, you know, MBIT is a gem that we have, and I'd like to see more students take advantage of it um, from all the districts, but especially ours. We had a presentation from the uh, MBIT administration regarding their goals for tw uh, 2020. Uh, or for next school years, excuse me, and uh, we had an initial budget presentation. The budget, pre budget presentation included a overall increase of year over year of 4.22%. Uh, on further discussion, we received some information. Um, Council Rocks projected incre difference, I should say, is a decrease of 0.43%. That's a direct representation of the number of children that we, that we send to the, uh, the district. Um, that does not have anything to do with renovations that have and, and um, improvements that have to be d done to the school where we pay um, at, on a different formula. Um, that's all I have. Did I miss anything, Dr. Thurman? No, I, I think that pretty much sums okay. it up. Um, Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know the policy committee has not met, but it may soon. Mrs. McKee? Correct. Thank you, Dr. Thurward. Thanks to Mr. Tate's excellent work last year. We are relatively caught up in our policies. We will, however, be meeting on Monday, March the 2nd. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Finance Committee, which you're going to miss, miss Marcel. Please. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Thorward. Um, the Finance Committee met on the evening of Thursday, February 6th. Uh, first, there was a transportation update presentation by Matt Adams, which focused on some of the positive changes the team will be implementing, including piloting the First View bus tracking app that is currently being tested and will roll out later this year. This was followed by a debt service plan update from Mr. Stone and PFM. Mr. Stone also reviewed um, the various consent agenda items that we are going to vote on shortly, as well as how we will be refining the RFP and contract um, schedule going forward. The next finance committee meeting will be on Thursday, March 12th at 7 p.m. Uh, Mr. Stone, is there anything you would like to add well, to that well, report? Why don't we do a motion for the consent first? And okay. Then we'll move sure. through because I know Bill's got some stuff to talk about. Sure. Um, I move to approve consent agenda items B through F as contained in the attachments to this agenda. Second. Thank you. Mr. Stone. I will only uh, supplement your report, Ms. Marceau, with, uh, the, to note that the district is considering uh, borrowing funds for the next phase of its capital plan uh, in the coming months in order to take advantage of the interest rate environment, which remains very low. Uh, so that is a bit uh, sooner than originally anticipated, but uh, we hope to achieve some additional savings as a result of going out sooner. Any comments, questions on the consent agenda items? Mr. Block, anything from you? No objections. Okay. Hearing no objections, I'd ask that the secretary record that with unanimous consent, please. Um, moving on. Moving on. Just wanted to get that out of the way before I forgot. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, for item G. I move to approve a five-year agreement with KCE Champions LLC for before and after school and kindergarten enrichment services subject to final review by the solicitor's office. Second. Thank you. Mr. Stone, would you like to add anything? Yes. Uh, I would like to highlight the uh, just a little bit more about this agenda item as it was not discussed at the Finance Committee. Uh, the district utilizes a third-party service for before and after school care at all 10 of its elementary schools and for a kindergarten enrichment program in the mornings at three of its elementary schools. Um, the last RFP for these services was, was issued in 2009, so it was time for us to revisit this uh, process. So we posted a detailed RFP for three weeks. We had a pre-proposal meeting to uh, explain the details and answer any questions of uh, prospective vendors. We opened eight proposals on February 14th. 
um, and we evaluated the revenue share percentage as our first factor to determine which uh, proposals we would bring back for finalist interviews. And the uh, revenue share percentage is based on two factors, a percentage share of gross revenue received by the vendor, as well as a uh, minimum amount to be received by the school district in, in dollars. So we were looking for the greater of those uh, two numbers. Um, we selected three finalists for interviews. Uh, one was uh, Champions, which is the incumbent <coughs> vendor. Uh, we selected another very experienced local provider in the Bucks County YMCA. And then we also seriously considered two uh, firms from outside of the area who are more national um, with who proposed numbers that were that were favorable um, and we selected one for for the finalist interview and that firm is innovation uh, innovation learning we held the interviews on tuesday with a team of principals uh, school administrative assistant who is also a user of the champions program currently and the purpose of these interviews to, was to evaluate the qualitative factors associated with their proposals. So we asked questions around safety and wellness of students, communication between the vendor and the school, as well as the uh, vendor and the parents. And we also looked at the tuition policies because it is important to the district that we receive revenue uh, at, for the uh, privilege of having the service in the district, but we do not want to have that. Uh, born by our uh, our parent groups who uh, our parents who utilize the services. So our recommendation is, as Ms. Marcel noted, to uh, renew our agreement with Champions for a five-year term. They've increased their revenue share from 13% of net revenue to 18% of gross revenue. So that's uh, a five percentage point increase, but also. Uh, it's on the, the top line of revenue instead of the bottom line of revenue. So it, it will translate into an additional approximately $110,000 of revenue to the district annually. They've also increased their discounts available to families, which is spelled out in their RFP, which will be incorporated as part of the agreement. And uh, they've addressed a major pain point for the kindergarten enrichment program, which is around its enrollment process. Enrollment for the kindergarten enrichment program, which is only 72 slots, is on uh, will be on April 1st and instead of being at 3 o'clock in the morning it will be at 12 noon and that was uh, the the main uh, feedback that we had heard from our community about the service um, and obviously um, be, being that we evaluated um, three very good finalists and in particular two local very well established local um, vendors this was really a decision of uh, 1A and 1B. We knew that we could, between uh, champions and the, YMC and the YMCA, we would receive great service. The numbers were very strong for both uh, proposals, and it really came down to that if we, uh, if, since either one could do it, we, we decided that to it would be in the best interest of the community to remain with the incumbent and not uh, create a disruption in the, in the community. So that is the uh, summary of the process and our rationale for the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Board comments, questions? I have a comment. So I uh, have to give Ms. Marcel credit. She, uh, when we were discussing preliminarily the uh, uh, Finance Committee agenda, Kristen adequately pointed out that it's a real hassle to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning to register your children for kindergarten. And I also applaud Mr. Stone for jumping on that and making sure that was part of the agreement with champions because that was the time to lock it down so that doesn't happen again anymore for our uh, parents. So. Thank you to both of you for that. Thank you. Uh, I should also thank Mr. Sanko. He was a very important <laughs> player in this process. Also, he helped teach me a lot about uh, the program and uh, helped with that very, very issue. So thanks to Andy. Any other board comments, questions? No. Mr. Block, anything from you? Uh, just really pleased to see Champions step up. It's great to see incremental revenue sharing and, and really happy for the families of the district that we're going to get to change that registration time. So completely supportive. Thank you. Okay. And I'm hearing no objections from you. Am I hearing any objections from the rest of the board? If not, I'd like it recorded with unanimous consent again, please. Moving on. Okay. I move to approve the health reimbursement service agreement with Mid-America Administrative and Retirement Solutions, LLC, subject to final approval from the solicitor's office. Second. Thank you. I'll, I'll just very briefly note that this is an agreement uh, for 
a third party administrator that the district utilizes uh, to fund unused sick day payments to the district's retirees. Uh, the fees are all borne by the participants, uh, but we had to, as the plan uh, resides with the school district, had to uh, sign this revised agreement uh, in order to comply with a uh, change uh, relating to the name of the platform being used, as well as some of the, the fees that were assessed through the mobile app and the uh, website. Uh, so the solicitor's office has provided me with comments. They are now back in the hands of the, of the vendor. Um, but we do recommend approving this so that we can continue to administer these services. Board comments, questions? Nothing from you, Mr. Block? No objection. Uh, hearing no objections, Madam Secretary, can we record that with unanimous consent? You want to take the personnel items together, please? I move to approve the personnel actions and personal actions addendum as contained in the attachments to this agenda. Second. Thank you. Questions? Can you do the second one with along with it? We did. He, she did. I did. Okay, I missed that. Apologies. Questions, comments? This is fairly. Yeah, everything is uh, fairly routine this yes. month. Yes. Yes. Um, Mr. Block, anything from you? No objection. Um, hearing none, let's record that one with unanimous consent as well. Uh, any other comments from finance before we move on? Okay, we'll move on to facilities then. Mr. Salon. Good evening. Uh, facilities Committee met last Thursday, uh, February 13th, 2020. Uh, Doug Keller went over the, much of what Dr. Fraser already mentioned in our capital program, uh, Rowing Hills update. Um, some some needed things uh, in the technology and in the building that we'll talk about shortly. Uh, Doug and I also had the pleasure of touring Rolling Hills on Friday. And for the parents of the Rolling Hills families at home listening to this, you are going to be shocked and amazed that that building is <laughs> fantastic. Um, I want to go back when there's drywall because um, it, what you saw on Friday is, is, is going to be even cooler when you put the walls up. Um, well, well done work on time under budget um doug's on top of it it's it's really 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 impressive the gym is is phenomenal so um congratulations to that team over there that are working every day and all you got to do is drive by there they're always out there <laughs> so um that's basically about it we have a lot of things on the agenda to to get approved uh but everything falls in line with the capital plan so i'll start with a i move to approve consent agenda item b as contained in the attachments to this agenda second thank you mr um, questions on that? That's all planned comments. So, um, Mr. Block, anything from you? No objection. Um, hearing none, let's record that one with unanimous consent. Um, go ahead, Mr. Selby. I move to approve plan con part D, E, and F for this Council Rock Star Center as described in the attachments to this motion. Can I get a second? Yeah. Oh, that's the it's consent eight. agenda. I'm sorry. That's it's the eight. consent eight. agenda. We can jump to letter C. You can, I apologize. No worries. It's, it's uh, I move to approve the visual sound proposal totaling $121,836 for LCT, interactive smart boards, and mounting hardware for the Rowing Hills Elementary School Additions and Renovations Project through the Core Stars bid number 034-023, subject to audit. Second. Thank you. Questions? Uh, we, we covered it in, uh, if you've got any comments. We, we did cover all of these in facilities. The only reason I kept them on the agenda is, is because of the value of each one of the items. On them. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, any board comments, questions? I'm not hearing any from Mr. Block. Nothing. Um, hearing none, let's record that one with unanimous consent as well. Um, number D, please. I move to approve the CMS communications proposal totaling $79,262 for data switches and accessories for the Rolling Hills Elementary School Additions and Renovation Project through GSA contract number GS35F-0295 and is an eighth and subject to audit. Second. Thank you, Mr. President. Any questions on this one? It, it, it's, it, it is really all under the budget of this renovation work, so let's just do the value. We're, we're pulling them out. 
Uh, Mr. Block, I believe you were there, so any questions from you? None for me. Okay, hearing none, let's record that one with unanimous consent as well. Um, last one, Mr. Smith. Uh, I move to approve the PEMCO proposal totaling $272,705.30 for the furnishings as listed on the attachment to this motion for the Rolling Hills Elementary School Additions and Renovations Project through CoStar's bid number 35-018, subject to audit. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Burke. Again, furniture for the, the, the uh, renovation work. Hearing no objections, I'll ask that it be recorded with unanimous consent. I, I said the last one, but it's not the last one. This is, this is the last one. Just a quick note on it. This uh, we're going to. The next thing we're going to talk about is a, a district-wide tree trimming and removal service that, that Mr. Taylor spoke about last week. Um, it's much needed throughout the district. So our, all the trees that need to come down are coming down, and when ones that need to be fixed are being fixed up. So I move to award multiple contracts, including Victory Tree Service. TNT Tree Services Incorporated, PAL Property Management, Property Maintenance and Tree Services, and Jimmy's Tree and Landscape Contractors, LLC, as attached to this motion for the tree and stump removal bid number 19-39, totaling a not to exceed bid amount $138,410, subject to audit. Second. Thank you, Mr. Marcel. Um, yeah, this one was covered with, with Video, vi uh, graphics as well, um, probably long overdue. I'm, I'm glad we're, we're taking care of it. And you did meet with some public members as part of this who, we, who are adjacent to some of the properties. We did. We had some neighbors that were concerned. We met with them. We revised the scope based on their concern. I think everyone involved was satisfied with what we've done uh, to keep community happy. But the bottom line is these are to protect the community and the students. Right. Uh, over hang, hanging branches at walkways and trees adjacent to neighbors' properties and things like that. And in addition, we have uh, many new trees that are being planted to replace some trees that are being removed and uh, mostly dead or uh, diseased trees that are being removed. Uh, healthy trees are being trimmed. Questions from the board, comments? Hearing none. Uh, I'd ask that the secretary. Nothing here. I, I assumed as much, Mr. Block. <laughs> Hearing none, I, I, I would ask the secretary to record that one with unanimous consent as well. Um, I don't have any board items listed. Do we have any board items? Okay. That brings us to the second round of public comment. Uh, it works the same as the first round of public comment. Is there anyone out here that wants to speak at the podium for our second round? Okay. Um, any new business from the board? Old business? Nothing. Oh, uh, okay. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, Joe. Sorry, Andy.